All right. Good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us tonight uh, for another uh, virtual college fair from Minnesota Association for College Admissions Counseling. We're excited to have you all um, and learn a little bit more about our institutions tonight. So a few housekeeping things just before we get started. You can type in the Q&A box any questions that you might have throughout tonight's uh, webinar. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot hear or see you, but they'll be able to answer those questions via the, the chat box feature. So you can ask a, an individual institution or ask a general question if that is uh, relevant to you. And then this is just one of the different sessions that are going on uh, throughout the next few weeks. And we actually have another one scheduled for tomorrow. So if that interests you at all, uh, feel free to go back onto the ShriveScan website where you registered for this one and you'll be able to register for some more upcoming events. And finally, uh, presentation will be recorded um, and available on the strivescan.com backslash Minnesota website within about a week of tonight's uh, presentation. So that way you can go back and look at slides or contact information or grab any materials that you may have missed um, during the live presentation. And now I'll turn it over to our presenters for tonight. Uh, we will start off with Southern Illinois. Okay, hello everyone. I hope everyone is doing good this evening. Let me get everything pulled up. Okay, all right. Hi, my name is Kennedy Lloyd and I am an admissions coordinator from Southern Illinois University Carbondale. And so I'm gonna be telling you a little bit about our institution. So first of all, we are a state school located in Southern Illinois in Carbondale, Illinois is the town which we are situated in. And we are a research university. So this means that all of our academic programs, all of our faculty are involved in research. And so that means you'll have an opportunity to be involved also. Um, we have over 200 academic programs. So we have colleges from um, every spectrum of a field that you can think of. And so within our institution, our enrollment is about 10,000 undergraduate students. And included in that, um, once you total up graduate students, law and medical students, um, we have about 13,000 students on campus, which is really awesome. Included in that, we also bolster an international student population. So we have over 100 different countries represented. Um, and then even though we are a state university, because our enrollment is around that 10,000 you know, student size, this means that our student faculty ratio um, is still smaller. And so we have a student faculty, student to faculty ratio of 13 to one. Um, so that means that we have less than 5% of our classes are 15 students or more. And most of our classes are around 20 to 30 students. And so this means that you're not gonna be a nameless space in a large lecture hall, but you're gonna get to have personalized interaction with your faculty members. And that's really important. It just enriches your educational experience. So one thing that is really awesome about SIU is that over 90% of our students receive some form of financial aid or assistance from us. This is in the form of scholarships and grants. We also do not have out-of-state tuition. All of our um, tuition rates for domestic non-resident students is the same as what in-state um, Illinois residents would pay. And so we do our best to make sure that our educational is affordable, um, regardless of where you're coming from. So with that said, we have a number of scholarship opportunities for incoming freshman students. These are merit-based scholarships that are solely based off your GPA. You don't have to apply for them, but with your admission, as long as you have these GPA or meet these minimum GPAs, um, you'll be awarded scholarships based off of what those rank at. Um, so these are our different scholarship tiers. And then for students who have um, higher GPAs, we also have some other competitive and merit-based scholarship opportunities for them. Um, for these ones, the University Excellence and then also the Chancellor Scholarship, you just need to be admitted um, by November 30th. And then for the Chancellor's, Chancellor Scholarship, you will be um, afforded the opportunity to apply for that scholarship and interview. And that is our, um, it covers tuition, covers fees, co covers room board. Um, so that is everything included in that Chancellor Scholarship. We do have on-campus housing um, and included with our on-campus housing, we have our any, 
time meal plan. So this is not something additional that students have to purchase from us, but this is already included in our housing costs. And then in all of our suites, um, we have suite style residence halls, not necessarily dorm style. Um, there is all utilities that you need, cable and internet, computer labs, AC, a lot of our rooms are furnished. And then we also offer living learning communities for students who wanna live with other students that are in their major. So if you don't know, SIU Carbondale, we are the Salukis, and this makes us unique because we're actually the only Salukis in the country. Um, the Salukis are an Egyptian hunting dog, and we actually have some real life Salukis that will come to campus, which is really exciting. Um, and so on top of that, we have our NCAA Division I sports teams. And so this just makes it a lot of fun. When you think about campus life and student involvement, this is something to keep in mind. And so we have all major athletic teams. We have basketball, baseball, football, all of which are doing really well right now. Um, and we are part of the Missouri Valley Conference. So this is something fun that students get to experience included in their student fees and is, is an activity fee. So this is nothing that you pay um, for to experience once you're a student here, but you get to go to these games and experience that part of campus life. So this is our current estimated budget for students. So looking at tuition fees and room and board, overall it's gonna be between 25 and $26,000. And so, like I mentioned, we work as hard as we can to offer all of our new students, both incoming freshmen and also transfer students, those merit-based scholarships um, to help with those costs. And so in order to apply, we ask that you submit our online application. There's a $40 fee in order to submit your application and then you just need to send us your official transcripts. And even though it says send us your official ACT and SAT scores, we are actually now test optional. Um, so we do not require those for general admissions, but we might require those for some of our competitive programs. So our nursing and rad sciences, those kind of degree programs. But other than that, we make admissions decisions mostly off of GPA. So definitely check us out on social media if you're wanting more of a snapshot of what it's like on campus. I'm seeing more of our buildings, more of our students. Definitely check us out on all of these platforms. And then this is my contact information. Definitely get in touch with me. I would love to talk more with you about SIU. Um, so if you'd like to learn more, this is my email address, and my phone number, and then you can also visit our website below. So thank you so much, everyone. Awesome, thank you. And then we will pass it over um, to St. Catherine University. Awesome, let me just get this pulled up super quick. All right, welcome everybody. So nice to virtually see you all. Uh, my name is Callie Seeger and I am an admission counselor with St. Catherine University, also known as St. Kate's. Um, so let's just get started. So just a quick overview for those of you who might not be as familiar with St. Kate's. We were founded just over 100 years ago by the Sisters of St. Joseph of Carondelet. And this is a group of bold, courageous women who founded St. Kate's with the idea that women should have the right to an education before they even had the right to vote. So that does mean that we are a women's college and we are in fact the largest private women's college in the nation. And I'll touch a little bit about what that will mean for you. Um, we are located in one of the hearts of the Midwest in St. Paul, um, and it's really in a residential area. So access to go downtown for any internships or jobs are really the fun things that you'll wanna do in the Twin Cities, but more so residential close by to campus. Um, and then we have really strong academic programs. So you'll see here that we have just over 60 different majors. We're really well known for our healthcare programs. So that would be things like our nursing program with a first year nursing guarantee. We have physical and occupational therapy, sonography. I mean, the list goes on um, in healthcare. We also have really strong business programs that emphasize women's leadership um, and some unique options too in fashion, um, American Sign Language and political science options too. Uh, one of the great aspects about St. Kate's is that if there's a major that you're really interested in that we happen to not have on our campus, we're connected with four other schools in the Twin Cities that you can take classes, major or minor at. So some great neighborhood connections there. So some of those unique advantages that I was kind of hinting at. So the women's college itself is a really unique advantage. 
Um, I think a lot of people can be kind of intimidated or not sure what that would mean. Um, but if you remember one thing, it's really just discussion-based classrooms. So if you are the kind of person that learns best from talking through with somebody, hear, going back and forth, hearing different perspectives, you'd probably benefit from attending a women's college. Um, but beyond the classroom experience, students really develop leadership and confidence being able to get involved in clubs and research and different things like that. Um, St. Kate's is also a really diverse institution and we see this as an advantage for our students to again, learn from those different perspectives. Um, small class sizes, again, um, 18 students is our average um, and the campus itself is just about 2000 students in our undergraduate program. Um, so getting to know the professors and having a lot of mentorship opportunities. Um, and again, going back to the Twin Cities, that's another really great advantage. Um, our students take the opportunity to get involved in service learning. So whether that's doing market research for a nonprofit in the Twin Cities or doing clinical work, um, some really great advantages that come from our location. And you'll see there that we work with over 600 internship partners. So if you are interested in applying to St. Kate's, we are um, rolling admission. So that really means that you can apply at any time. Um, our application opens up August 1st of your senior year. So you're able to apply then, but you're also able to apply in September or all the way through um, really the entire year. And it is a holistic review. So we'll look at a couple of different things with your GPA, um, class rank, your letters of recommendation, everything that you send in. Um, and at that same time, you're considered for our academic scholarships and those go up to 32,000 each year. So um, again, I think people can get kind of intimidated by, by a private college and not know how affordable it may be, um, but we offer really great scholarships um, based on academics and then have some scholarships for our out-of-state students as well. And I just wrapped through that super duper quick. Um, so if you guys have any questions, feel free to put them in the chat. Um, I'm available and then I have another colleague here who's able to answer questions. Otherwise you can certainly reach out to us um, in other ways. Thanks everybody. All right, I will pass it over next to Will. Uh, to talk a little bit more about the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. Awesome. Thank you, Bryson. And let's get going. All right. Well, thanks for being here tonight, everybody. My name is Will. I work for the University of Nebraska, located in Lincoln, Nebraska. We are a proud member of the Big Ten Conference and are the flagship university of the state of Nebraska. My job, uh, I work in the Office of Admissions for Nebraska. And I work specifically with Minnesota students as they're thinking about taking their next steps after their senior year onto our campus. So if you have any questions about Nebraska, if you have any questions about what it's like to be a student coming down from Minnesota on our campus, let me know. I'm gonna have my contact information on one of the last slides here. So I'd be happy to help answer any questions. Uh, but tonight, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about what makes Nebraska so unique. Our fight song is there is no place like Nebraska. So hopefully I'm able to explain a little bit of why that is. So first I mentioned that we're in the Big Ten Conference, uh, but we are actually the second smallest in the Big Ten. So our undergraduate size is right around 25,000 students. And so that makes us, like I said, second smallest in the Big Ten, um, more of a mid-sized Midwestern university. I like to say that we are the Big Ten school where you're going to see people you know. When you're walking across campus, you're going to see familiar faces. And you're also going to have a lot of tight-knit community opportunities when it comes to getting involved in club, getting, excuse me, getting involved in clubs, getting involved in research opportunities, um, as well as a variety of other things on campus. Um, at the same time, you are going to be at a Big Ten school, and so that's going to have a lot of different academic opportunities on campus. So we have nine academic colleges on campus and 150 majors to choose from. I would also like to mention that uh, our majors are direct admit. So if you would like to start as a business student at Nebraska, uh, you can see our business school on the screen here. 
If you apply to Nebraska and are admitted to our university, you will start as a business student from the first day you arrive on campus. So I think this is a huge opportunity for students that want to gain experience in their first year studying the major that they are pursuing. So just know at Nebraska, you'd have the opportunity to step onto campus and start your program right away. The only two colleges on campus that are not direct admit are our Hicks and Lead School of Fine Performing Arts or College of Engineering. There are some separate um, admission requirements for those two colleges, um, but again, uh, every other program on campus, you'd be able to start in right away. Now, a big part of going to a Big Ten research institution is the research. So the Big Ten was founded as a network of research institutions. And together, we do more research than all of the Ivy League schools put together as far as research dollars. So just know, by going to a Big Ten institution, you are going to a premier research institution. Um, and it's going to have a lot of opportunities for you to gain experience in a variety of different fields that you might want to do research in. I think oftentimes when students hear the word research, they think of lab coats, science projects, but we do research in business, political science, literature. And so if there is something that you want to kickstart your career with at Nebraska, just know by going to a university like Nebraska, a university in the Big Ten, you're going to have a lot of awesome opportunities to do so. All right. So one of our most notable alumni coming from Nebraska, uh, Warren Buffett says that price is what you pay, but value is what you get. And we hold true to that on our campus. We have the lowest out-of-state tuition in the Big Ten Conference, and we have some of the most competitive out-of-state scholarship opportunities as well. This year, we are test optional. So if you want to apply and you don't have a test score, that is totally okay juniors in the session tonight next year we will be test optional as well so you could come in with just a gpa and be evaluated for some of those competitive scholarships that i mentioned and we are going to continue to make sure that we're giving our students the opportunity to get a high value for what they are paying for their education we understand it's a big investment on your part so we want to hold true to that on our end all right what are your next steps um, for yourself. So I'm gonna have my contact information, like I said, at the end of the presentation today, but come down to Lincoln and see it for yourself. We are offering socially distanced visits right now. So if you would be interested in coming down in the late spring, early summer, you definitely can do that. It's always good to see campus when there's students walking around. Otherwise we will have visits available throughout summer and early fall as well, if you're interested. And then our application is going to open up on August 1st. So if you wanna be first in line, know that you can apply right away. You probably hear back from us within 48 hours of applying, as long as you self-report your um, courses that you took in high school, as well as a DPA. On the next couple of slides, I'm gonna have some links that are available uh, just to visit and some more information about the college as a whole. So if you'd like to visit, this is the visit link that we have available. Again, we're going to be open throughout the summer, so I'd advise you all to come down, see what makes Nebraska so unique, and see what it feels like on campus as well. The application for admission is going to be this link right here. Again, August 1st, don't miss the date. It's always good to apply early, and you'll hear back about your academic scholarships from us automatically, so there's no need to reapply for that. And then finally, this is my contact information on the screen here. So, don't be a stranger, reach out. I'm always happy to help. And that is all I have. So thank you for everybody and go Big Red. All right. And next up we have uh, Harrison from Westminster. Yeah, hi everybody. Let me just get this set up. Oh, all right. Is that visible? I hope. Yep, you're good. Awesome. Thank you for the confirmation. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Harrison Casper. I'm an admissions counselor uh, from Westminster College, and I'm really happy that I could be here with you all tonight. Um, Westminster College uh, is a 
uh, located within um, Salt Lake City's Sugar House neighborhood um, and Westminster College. Uh, the neighborhood, just kind of the general location, just to give you a little bit of background of, of where it's at and the uh, geographic uh, things that it offers. Uh, we're just 10 minutes from downtown Salt Lake City, uh, 30 minutes from six different mountain resorts, uh, and a stone's throw away from a number of national parks. Uh, so we have the benefits of a larger city, uh, but with still trails and outdoor opportunities, uh, so close to campus and uh, 10 ski resorts uh, within an hour's drive as well. Um, so it's just a little bit about Westminster um, in general. And moving forward, uh, Westminster is a private independent liberal arts college. Um, and just to dive into that a little bit more, um, this is where students can benefit uh, from a multidisciplinary, multidisciplinary learning in an atmosphere dedicated to civic engagement. So our students really love to be involved within the community. And I think that that is bred and cultivated uh, through the liberal arts passion and focus. Um, and if you're not familiar with the liberal arts, liberal arts, um, just as a general background, it allows you to explore other interests um, and broaden your knowledge in maybe areas outside of your major, or areas outside of where you were originally coming in with uh, interest in, just so that you can dabble in different areas um, and really find other things that you might be not even know you uh, were originally passionate about. And I think another thing that aids in that uh, is that our total enrollment currently is about 2,215 students. Um, so this is a lower number for, um, for colleges and institutions. We're really happy that we can build that tight-knit community of students um, and about half of our students are from out of state so you really get a diverse broad perspective uh, from other students coming in from many different areas um, across uh, the states but across the globe with our international students as well um, and as a private school uh, we're really lucky uh, and we're really happy that we can offer the same tuition as well as generous scholarships uh, for both in-state and out-of-state students as well as need-based aid um, for in-state and out-of-state to students as well. And with that size, um, we also have an average class size of about 15 students. Uh, so that's where that close knit community um, of supportive uh, individuals comes into play. Uh, and we're also a teaching first institution. So we really have a, a bunch of professors who not only are they professionals in their field and dedicated to their research on, uh, but they're also, they're more so dedicated to the teaching of the students um, and the ability to teach these students and see you succeed within um, Westminster's community. Um, and then speaking of that, uh, we also have our, our academic offer offerings. Uh, Westminster offers over 50 different programs and majors. So there's not a lacking of uh, you to choose from uh, all different uh, kinds of backgrounds and interests. And some of our most popular majors currently uh, are in nursing, business, performing arts, um, biology and our outdoor education and leadership program. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity for you to dabble in many different things, um, including five different schools, uh, the arts and sciences, the school of business, school of education, nursing and health sciences and the honors college. Um, so that is some offerings that we have for our students. We're really happy that we could offer a broad perspective of academic offerings. Um, and moving forward, if you are interested in getting involved in athletics whatsoever, uh, we actually do have our Westminster College Athletics and are part of the Rocky Mountain Conference uh, Division II. Um, we're a home to about 15 different D2 sports. Uh, so if you're interested in any of those, feel free to reach out um, if you have any more questions on those and how to get involved in that. Uh, as an athlete coming in. And there are uh, performance-based scholarships, so it's definitely something you can look into as well as a student. So one of my favorite things is another way that we have supported our students is with our academic programs, such as the Legacy Program, which uh, helps and aids in our first generation college students, as well as our McNair Scholars that helps and aids in um, underrepresented populations, being able to get them into grad school and giving them the tools for success, um, but as well as other things like our Westminster Outdoor Expedition, which is 15 weeks on the road, learning about educational leadership within the environment um, in several different states uh, with professors still gaining your college degree. Uh, so, so many different ways to get involved um, and internships and research opportunities uh, are, are not in a lacking whatsoever within the Westminster community. And as long as you apply yourself, uh, especially within your classrooms and with your professors, uh, there's many opportunities to get involved with some, sometimes even the research that the professor's doing um, or local small businesses or bigger businesses as well uh, that are within Salt Lake's community since we're just 10 minutes from downtown. 
and residents and student life. Um, so this is an amazing part of our uh, of our community. It's definitely where the two year on on campus housing requirement really cultivates and breeds uh, that tight knit community. And that's why we have that on campus housing requirement. And you have a choice between traditional style, which is the dorm you see right there, or more, maybe more of an apartment style housing. Um, so it is up to you, uh, but there's also other ways to get involved. So 100 thousand plus hours of community service logged last year. Uh, so our, that is the emphasis on civic engagement that our students really take. Um, and then 40 plus academic clubs. So there's always ways to get involved in academic clubs. Um, and if you ever feel like there's a club you don't uh, you don't see that you might want to create, um, that is within your bounds to create that and, and gather other students that uh, share common interests with you. Um, or you can get involved with ASW, our Associated Students of Westminster, which is our student government. Um, and I won't be going over this today, but this is many other ways that we support our students and our student support services. Um, and you can, uh, my contact information will be on the last slide. Uh, so feel free to reach out to me on uh, some of these things that we offer for our students, but there's many ways that we support them. Um, and that's what we try to emphasize. Um, and paying for college, uh, we do it all based on a holistic review of academic performance. Um, and we range between scholarships of 11,000 to $27,000 all students are considered for merit scholarship coming in um, so everyone is uh, automatically applied and we also have need-based grants just to make sure that college is affordable for our students and that no one's being left behind or left out um, as well as talent-based scholarships which i mentioned briefly before and if you have any other questions i know that that was kind of a lot of information to be rushed through um, but feel free to reach out to me um, and reach out to our admissions office and i'd be more than happy uh, to talk to any students that have any questions about uh, anything on these slides or anything in general about admissions thank you all right and we last but not least we'll have Tara, bring us home. No pressure. Right. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, Bryson. My name is Tara Malarkey. I'm a regional recruitment director at Xavier University in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, we are a Catholic Jesuit institution, uh, medium size, about 5,000 undergraduate students, um, located just five miles north of downtown Cincinnati. The Jesuits are an order of Catholic priests about 500 years old, founded by St. Ignatius of Loyola, founded on educating the whole person and service. Um, and we are really proudly one of 27 Jesuit colleges around the country. There we go. Good. So our mascot at Xavier is the Musketeers. Um, and the Musketeers cry is all for one and one for all. And that is a motto that is um, very prevalent across our campus. We are really proudly um, serving our students um, and, and really proudly serving one another. So we um, genuinely build community throughout our entire experience. Um, and this starts on move in day. So here's a picture of our move crew, student volunteers, literally hundreds of them that help students move in so that parents and, and incoming freshmen don't have to lift a finger, which is just one way in which we begin to build a community that is very present over four years. Here's a couple of quick facts about Xavier from the freshman class of this past year coming in in 2020. Um, about 55% of our students were coming from outside of Ohio. We're located in Cincinnati, but we're definitely a national institution. Um, our students come from all 50 states. They come from 40 countries around the world. Um, and I think it's also really helpful to note that 40% of our students are the only one from their high school to come to Xavier. So it really is a, a place where students can come and, and be 100% themselves. It's not um, a school where half of your class goes to necessarily, um, but that's okay. Our students are uniquely and diversely passionate and it really does help reinforce that sense of building community and service to one another, of course. Um, we are a Jesuit institution, but I do want to mention that we do have 18 faith traditions on our campus, and our campus ministry um, is really happy to support every student, regardless of their faith beliefs. Um, and about 24% of our students are students of color, um, underrepresented students as well. A couple of fast facts about our academics. Um, again, we're medium size, about 5,000 5, undergraduate students, um, but we do also have very direct attention to our students as well with a 12 to one student to faculty ratio and an average class size of about 21 students per class. We have over 90 undergraduate degree programs, all with direct entry. So if you're an incoming freshman, um, when you apply to Xavier, you apply directly to the program in which you're interested in studying. If you're admitted, you're in right away freshman year. 
Because we're a Jesuit institution that really values educating the whole person, we do require a core of common studies, which students take throughout their four years at Xavier. They're not reader courses or um, general education courses. They're co courses that are genuinely designed to help you um, learn how to think, not necessarily what to think. These courses include things like philosophy, theology, the, um, diverse cultures, English, rhetoric, history, so on and so forth, because we genuinely believe it gives students a good foundation for their education and helps kind of helps them to become men and women for others. About a third of our students study abroad and nearly every student who attends Xavier participates in some sort of internship, research opportunity or clinical experience. It's really hard to get out of Xavier, to leave Xavier without having hands-on work um, or research experience. Here's a couple of top majors for our incoming students. We have three undergraduate colleges, like I mentioned with direct entry. These are some of our most popular majors, um, but that is, is certainly, like I said, more than 90 undergraduate programs. So these are not the only programs that we offer. Um, we do have a rolling admission process, with an early priority deadline of December 1st. And basically what this means is that we review applications on a rolling basis as early as August 1st, so the earlier you apply, the earlier you receive an admission decision. Typically, it takes about two to three weeks to get an admission decision in the mail. Um, and we do require just a high school transcript and an application to apply. We've been test optional since 2019 and intend to stay test optional moving forward in the post-COVID times. Um, so again, you apply rolling decision, the earlier you apply, the earlier you receive your admission decision with direct entry. However, the priority one de deadline really means that um, you are um, guaranteed to be reviewed equally before December 1st. After December 1st, we only review on a space available basis. Typically, our College of Nursing is the first to fill, so I do encourage students who are interested in a particular program to try to apply by December 1st for equal consideration for both admission and all merit-based scholarships. One of my absolute favorite things about Xavier is the fact that every student who steps foot onto our campus already has a success team in place. And these are people who are dedicated to your success on our campus. Every student is assigned an academic advisor and you're required to meet with your academic advisor every semester before you register for classes. They're your advocates in helping you get through college to make sure you graduate in four years, helping you plan your course of study, pick up a minor if you want to and study abroad. Your success coach is literally just there to help you succeed, to help you transition to college. We all know that this is the very first time students are, are going away to college or are um, graduating from high school and living on their own. And success or achieving success is, is really hard. That transition can be really challenging. So the su success coach is there to help you find resources, make sure that you're doing okay if you're ill so you know where to go. If you are having roommate disagreements, you can talk with your coach to make sure um, that, that you're succeeding in whatever that means to you at Xavier. You also receive a financial aid counselor to make sure that you understand if you're taking out any loans or if you're applying for additional scholarships or um, if you have, have questions about any sort of repayment plans, your financial aid counselor is there to walk you through that as well. In addition to a career coach, every student starting freshman year has a career coach because ultimately we know that once you graduate from college, you wanna be able to do something with that degree. Um, so the career coach will help you draft a resume, create business cards, make sure that you're getting internships or experiences that you really want to, to sort of pad your resume and help you understand who you wanna be when you graduate from college. You also have access to optional mentors, either a peer mentor or a professional mentor. These programs started in our College of Business um, and they're now available to every undergraduate student at Xavier because our business students were really so genuinely pleased with having professional and peer mentors teaching them and kind of walking alongside them during their journey. Even though we're very serious about academics, we're also really, really proud of our 18 Division I athletics in the Big East. I just got an update that the, Mar uh, the Xavier men's basketball team lost to Butler um, in the Big East tournament, but that's okay. There's always next year. Um, but we're extremely proud to have the Cintas Center right on our campus. So even though we're five miles north of Cincinnati, the Cintas Center is right here. Um, and another benefit too is that students have free tickets to every single Division I athletic event that we have. Even though we do have Division I sports, we also have club and intramural sports in addition to 170 different student organizations um, so our students can get involved in things that they're really passionate about, um, both inside and outside of the classroom. 
Um, another piece I want to mention is that we have a 98% success rate. And basically what this means is that just 2% of our students within six months of graduation are actively seeking employment. We're incredibly proud of the fact that our students are successful. Again, and whatever that means to them, once they graduate from Xavier, they're out, into, out in the world doing things that they love and that they're really passionate about. And that's something that we're really proud of. I also want to mention all of my contact information is here. Um, so I am a regional recruitment director at Xavier, and I am regionally based in Milwaukee, working just with Wisconsin students and students from Minnesota. So if you have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'm more than happy to be an advocate for you during this process. And it's also important for me to share that Xavier is open for visitors currently um, six days a week. So it is um, something we've been really proud to be able to host visitors throughout this entire academic year as our students have been on campus and have been relatively safe um, in class taking classes, mostly in person, which we intend to do in the fall as well. So with that, I will say thank you. And I will say thanks to all. All right. And that is the last presentation. So I just have some housekeeping things as um, we will allow the uh, room to remain open in case students have questions. Uh, don't forget that you can utilize that question and answer button at the bottom of your screen uh, and then we can field them um, on our end. So before you log off tonight, I just want to remind you all of the quick survey that will be on your screen as soon as you exit the Zoom meeting link. So we appreciate any kind of feedback that you uh, can provide us upon exiting uh, the webinar tonight. There are more sessions coming up tomorrow. So if you are interested in learning more about different institutions, um, there are some more scheduled tomorrow and then uh, throughout the next few weeks. So please look at the StriveScan website to register for more. And then a reminder that the recording will be available uh, on the StriveScan website within a week of the event for you to go back to um, and get any kind of information that you may have missed. So I'll just ask um, the university reps if you want to hang out for a, a minute or two to see if you have any last minute questions that we can help them out with. Um, and again, students, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in that question and answer box. Doesn't look like we have any more uh, coming in. So we'll conclude this section of tonight's event and, and wrap up for the night actually. So uh, thank you all for taking time out of, you know, your busy schedules as well. We appreciate it and uh, stay safe, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, bye. Bye everybody.